All right, so Southland Conference action, back to it, week two, the demons are in town. And as we always do, we get a chance to visit with uh, the opposition. And last week, we uh, got to hear from Haley Tippett from Central Arkansas. And uh, today, here at the blog, we get a chance to talk to Madeline Drake and Reagan Rogers from Northwestern State. So, gals, uh, thanks for being willing to sit down and chat before the match today. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. All right, so you're both seniors. So the first thing I want to ask both of you is, are you trying to put that out of your mind? You know, senior night, this is the last hurrah, or are you kind of embracing the fact that this is senior year? I would say I'm embracing it. I just try to cherish every moment and kind of sink, let it all sink in. What about you, Reagan? Uh, yeah, I would definitely say cherish every moment. Every moment. We say every practice, you know, we're never going to get this day back. We're never going to get this practice back, so just leave it all on the court every time. So has there been – any thought of what that senior night will be like for you guys with family there and everybody else? Yeah, I think it'll be really emotional just all these four years coming to an end. Um, I'll probably definitely cry, happy tears, but um, yeah, definitely looking forward to it, but also dreading it a little bit. Okay, let's get into some background. Um, Reagan, you're from Blanco. 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 Oh, gosh. See, I, I practiced and still got it wrong. Okay. So if you're not familiar with where that is, it's actually in a very pretty part of Texas, I think. Hill country, west of Austin, north of San Antonio, but kind of isolated a little. When I pulled up the Google Maps for Blanco, the Google image that came up was a dirt road, <laughs> <laughs> literally. Um, did you kind of look for a smaller town feel when you were considering colleges to play ball? Uh, most definitely. You know, that's why I fell in love with Natchitoches. I fell in love with the town and just the close-knit community. And it, ma it felt like home, so that's ma the main reason why I chose it. Okay, so we're going to play a game. We're going to have some trivia here at the end, but here's the first trivia. We know Madeline's from Tulsa. Have you ever driven from Natchitoches to Blanco to drive home? Oh, most definitely. I, all of freshman, sophomore, junior years, back and forth all the time. Okay, okay. So have you ever driven from Natchitoches to Tulsa? Yes. Okay. Uh, who had to drive farther? So that's your trivia question. Which one of you is farther from home? Do you know? I think it's actually the same. We were both like exactly seven hours. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's pretty yeah. even. It is pretty even. That's kind of what I, you're, I think Madeline maybe has about 20 or 30 miles on you. That's it. So I, I wouldn't have guessed that until I like mapped that out. Um, so Madeline, how, being from Tulsa and where, what's the story on how you got to Natchitoches? Well, um, I just got a recruiting email from them, so I thought I'd follow up, and then I went on a visit and just fell in love with um, the team and just the, the college town that Natchitoches and just kind of fell in love with it, and it felt like the right fit for me. Reagan, once you got to Northwestern State, you're both first and second years. You were sixth on the team in attacks. You played, but you weren't a primary attacker. Your last year, you had more than 500 attacks greater than any other girl on the club what changed was it opportunity was it health what do you kind of cite as the big difference in being able to take a huge step forward last year I mean I definitely just wanted to prove myself I knew it had it in me and when I got the chance the opportunity I just took advantage of it and gave it all I had so now, Madeline, I gotta admit Madeline I I actually think you're underrated uh, and there, here's the reason why I think this and you probably know this as a middle blocker you came in just under one block per set last year. And when the conference puts out the stat leaders, they only, are you aware of this? They only publish the leaders for one block and higher. And you had exactly the same number of blocks as our Mackenzie Hanna, and yet she was 1.03 and you were 0.97, so people don't see your name. Do you keep up with stuff like that? Um, I do a little bit just because our coach, he's a stats guy, so I kind of try to keep up with it and just I set goals for myself in that way. So um, I definitely, that's the goal for me this year to have over one block per set because last year I was so close and yeah. <laughs> quite make it. What would you, your, uh, so your, your trajectory was a little different than Reagan's in that your freshman year you didn't play as much. You did get in some matches there, but then your sophomore year and last year you played a lot. What's been the thing that you think you've improved upon the most while you've been at Northwestern State? Um, I would just say consistency and just um, I just try my best to be efficient for my team and to not make as many errors and when I get the ball to put it away. So I would just say consistency. 
Okay, so both of you being seniors, leadership's a big deal. Um, you each have players that are substantially younger than you at your positions. So, Reagan, we'll start with you. What, how would you describe your leadership style? And talk a little bit about the outside hitters as a group. I mean, Alexis was a primary hitter for you guys in years past, and she played as a freshman a lot, but she's still a year behind you. And then Hannah came in last year and was freshman of the year. So how does that dynamic work with all of the pin hitters? I mean, we definitely push each other each practice, you know, make each other better. We're very competitive. But as a leadership role, you know, I just try to do my best and set good examples for them. So when they are in this position next year, they know, like, a basis of, like, how to follow. And, you know, they can add their own twist to it and make it better. So, so are you somebody who's more of sort of silent leader, get your group together off the court, or are you more of a – in your face vocal type person I'm I would say I'm a little bit of both I'm not so much in your face but I will definitely like tell you something but then if I see like I need to back off then I'll definitely back off so now Madeline your crew is in a little different boat and you're the only senior middle blocker you have Courtney who's a year younger than you and one of the players that we went over in our ESPN meeting a lot that on this morning was Brooke Wood um, just primarily because her last couple of matches have been particularly strong. So what's that like? You're the only, you're the only senior leader among the middles. Um, how do you kind of coordinate n them needing to hear from you when, ne when they need it? Well, in practice, um, I take on that leadership role and that if I see they're struggling with something or if I see something they can improve on, I definitely try to point it out and just try to – we try to make each other better – so we can produce best for the team. One thing I definitely wanted to ask you about specifically, uh, primarily being a believer, you got a chance to play for an Athletes in Action team uh, in Brazil, if I remember right. Talk a little bit about how did you even get involved in that? After I read about it on the website, I saw that Caitlin Mueller over at ACU was there with you. How, how did you even find out about that and just talk, walk through the process of getting affiliated with that group? So actually two summers ago, I, I don't know what year it is, but I went, um, I went with them to Thailand. So I already had connections with Athletes in Action. So I knew I wanted to go on another trip. So when I saw they were doing this, I thought it was a great opportunity. And so I just reached out to them and it worked out. Now, there weren't, this wasn't like, uh, there weren't like 20 there weren't like 20 gals on this team, right? I mean, what, it was a smaller club? Uh, but there were just 12 girls on the team. So how, so did you travel or was everything just in Brazil? Were there teams, who were you playing? Like, and how long did it last? So we did, we went to Ohio for a training camp for about a week before, and then we flew out to Brazil and it was called the FISU Games. So it was just North and South American teams. And we played for four days, four matches. How would you rate the overall competition compared to what you've seen while you play with Northwestern State? Um, I mean, it, it's higher because it's international. I mean, we had girls from all over, but it was hard because I mean, we, we had only been together for a week, so it's hard to kind of be a team, but there was definitely a lot of talent on the team. One of the things, Reagan, that we talked about in production meetings this morning and that I've thought about a lot with you guys is that this season seems like it could be like 2014. The year before y'all arrived on campus, Northwestern State was a middle seed, played the conference tournament, you know the stories. It was probably the worst loss I, as a person affiliated with SFA, ever witnessed. You're smiling. <laughs> I can laugh a little bit about it now, but it really, it really, it's, it stung. Is that, I mean, St Stacey DeFrancesco is a coach now. Has that been talked about any? Has she kind of shared that with you? I mean, definitely at the beginning of the season, you know, we knew we had those similarities to that year. And Stacey always reminds us but tries not to remind us too much. You know, we don't want to compare it every part of our season as that season because we are going to have our ups and downs. But, you know, we do, like when she does tell us about that season, we do take, like, everything she says and just really embrace it and try to push through and like really make it to what it was so how much I mean it, to me sitting here right now 
I think of Northwestern State Volleyball as in a better place than what your records have actually shown. To, I mean, to be honest, I mean, your freshman year, y'all won seven games. Your sophomore years, you won 12 games. Last year, you won 15 games. And, I mean, this year, you may win close to 20 games. So do, is that the way you see this too? It's like the numbers, the wins and losses – don't tell sort of a complete story of the trajectory during the time you've been at NSU? I mean, when we came in as freshmen, Coach Sean, you know, he was a new coach and new coaching staff, and he definitely told us, you know, it's going to be a building year and building each year is going to get better and better. And last year he said, you know, this is a this team is a two-year process. This is the first year, and then next year is the year that we're all going to put it all together and make something happen. So that's what we're looking forward to this year. I know, I know that – I thought it was really cool that the university, the club, made a big deal about that you got to play at Tulsa. Um, the The team put up a lot of photos. I can only assume those were family, friends from there. Was that planned? Like, did you, when they made the schedule, did they come to you and go, hey, Madeline, it's a senior year. We've been invited to go play at Tulsa. We're going to do this, you know, primarily for you. Um, well, he actually, we have a team calendar, and he put on the calendar Tulsa dash Drake, don't freak out, because it wasn't confirmed, and so he knew I would be excited because we went my sophomore year. Um, but he didn't necessarily come to me, but I think he wanted to, he tries to get us back home to play in, from our, in front of our family. How many people were able to be there when you guys went and played there? that don't ordinarily get a chance to travel to Natchitoches or around the Southland to watch you play? Um, I don't have an exact number, but, I mean, a lot of my um, family and friends got to come watch me that don't want really want to make the seven-hour drive, seven drive home, so that was really special just to be able to play in front of them. Okay, so a last round of stuff. Um, here's where you get to rat out your teammates, or you can choose each other if you, if you really think so. And if you think of an example of why you would answer a particular teammate, then tell a story. Who's the team clown? Who's the team comedian? The one that is constantly making all of you crack up. I would say this year would definitely have to be Cayman. She has definitely brought a new twist to our team. Everything she says, we just don't know whether that she to take her seriously or to just laugh because you, you honestly don't know what's going to come out of her mouth next. So. Yeah, I was going to say Cayman or Brooke, and especially if you get them together, it's it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> okay, so who's the team bookworm? Who's the team I'm always studying? Bean, for sure. She oh, yeah. is all about her studies. She's a freshman, right? She's a sophomore. 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 I think uh, during one tournament, even before a game, she was, like, reading her textbook. She legit yeah. brought her textbook. At the gym. At the gym. <laughs> Okay, so who's the most spaced out? So Kirikov is talking, and, like, she's the one that's, like, not paying attention. So, well, I wouldn't say she's not paying attention, but I would definitely say her. Really? I was going to say Emily. (laughs) Oh, okay. I mean, we have a few. (laughs) You got a few that kind of check out? All right, okay. So this is always an essential for – Warm-ups, you're in the gym. Who's the team best dancer? <laughs> Me. Just kidding. <laughs> That's a lie. Um, Brooke and Charlie. They do, they do these little dance battles in the locker room before games, and it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. They make it funny to where, like, they're goofing around, but it's actually, like, pretty good for, like, one of us yeah. to try to dance. So it's actually not that funny. So, so Brooke wins – in the top one or two comedian and best dance. So that's like a dangerous combination. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, and last, who, if anyone, uh, who can do the best imitation of coach? Does anybody ever do an imit- When Does anybody ever behind coach's back, like, try and talk or act like coach? I would say Meg or Charlie. That's who I would say. What do you think? Yeah, I would definitely say Meg because we had – what was it at practice one time? Halloween, we had to dress up someone, and she dressed up as Coach Sean and, you know, wore what he typically wears to practice, bald cap, bald, bald. everything. Like, she honestly looked pretty identical to him, but she does a pretty good impression of him, so. You know, I talked to somebody a couple years ago that said Low Miller was kind of a character. So I, so I can kind of, I mean, in a good way. But I, somebody told me she was kind of had 
funny twist to her too. So cool. Okay, so now I think we knew more about the demons than we knew ten minutes ago. So Madeline Drake, um, Reagan Rogers, we'll see you guys twice uh, soon here tonight, and then after y'all's long and ridiculous road trip to New Orleans and Nichols, we'll be back in your gym next Saturday, and of course we'll all be in Natchitoches uh, before Thanksgiving for the tournament. So, gals, have a great match tonight, and thanks for being willing to sit down and chat. Thank you. Thank you.